Alright, it's live. Hi everyone again, it's Mike Senna here. I wanted to show you uh, this, this nice new year we're having here. Uh, I want to show you something else uh, that I have not explained uh, in public. Uh, what I have is Wally here, uh, and the drivetrain is, is best, is probably the, uh, the, the thing on the, on the whole robot that is, is the most complex thing. Uh, a lot of people will get stuck uh, doing a drivetrain like this. So I'll show you how this tread works. This is a design uh, collaboration partly with Michael McMaster and I'll let you know what he's, his part of the design is and myself uh, creating this uh, treaded drivetrain. But I want to show you the design considerations, what you have to consider when you're building a drivetrain to get a nice smooth uh, running robot. So right here is uh, the Wally and You gotta watch and pay attention <laughs> to his head, the top of his head. Oh man, I crashed him. But uh, watch the top of his head as he's moving. Uh, what you'll see is, is how smooth the top of the head is. It's not really shaking him around. And that's due to the smoothness and the design of the drivetrain and the, the considerations that I'll show you uh, that, that need to be done in order to have that happen. Uh, there have been uh, robots that I've seen that have drivetrains similar to this, but they've been shaken apart due to the vibration of the drivetrain. So I want to show you, first of all right here, just a little diagram very simply what, what, why a tread system vibrates so much. Uh, with a normal wheel, if you just take it down to the most simplistic uh, track drive, is just a track going around a normal wheel. So now you have a wheel with all these flat spots. You roll this wheel and it starts jittering up and down and it's bouncing up and down. That's what gives you the vibration of a, of a drivetrain like this. So if you look here, this is kind of the way a tank operates, and if you look at a tank or a caterpillar or, or whatever, a, a machine like that, a construction machine, you'll see the two drive wheels up high, and then you'll see a bunch of little wheels down here. Uh, in a real vehicle, these will each have shock absorbers in there, but I'm not going to put shock absorbers in, into this drive system. It will be very complex. So the d idea is it's coming around this, but when it comes down here, it kind of levels off each track so it slowly and more gradually hits the ground. So in this tank right here that we see, here's where I'm talking about. So also you can see that the drive system never, the drive wheels never hit the ground. Uh, so you're taking the stress off of these wheels as well and you're putting them all on these shock absorbed wheels. So let's uh, go first, I guess with, with uh, I guess let me show you that, those wheels. So here is a Wally drivetrain that I've taken all apart. Uh, the track really is in the way here. I'll explain this in a little while. Uh, you'll see these small wheels on the bottom here. These wheels are an eighth of an inch lower than these drive wheels. Uh, the two back wheels, if you look through here, are driven by the motor. These are the NPC 2212s motor. There's one per side. And this axle goes through the motor. So the motor actually drives a straight through axle. So I mounted uh, two wheels to the axle of the motor. So the motor, you can see the drive right here is where the actual motor is. This is the gearbox, and then this is the motor. So the reduction here is uh, three to one. So each time the motor spins three times, the wheels spin once. Uh, that gives me torque. 
So as you can see here, there's gears on each of these motors, I mean on each of these wheels, that the, the chain is actually running around in. So the side-to-side -side motion is not there. The track won't come off of this drivetrain because of these uh, steel gears and the steel gearings. So the first version of this drivetrain didn't have steel anywhere. They didn't have these tracks either. It was just a plastic track. What happened eventually is the plastic track wore down and it also, can you grab one of those plastic tracks that's in the garage? I'll show you the plastic track and what happened to it. But in, uh, in any event, uh, this is part of my design, putting these wheels on the bottom. So the first go around, of course, was without uh, these, these wheels on the bottom. So the track came around, hit, uh, and very violently shook this uh, Wally. So I knew something had to change. So again, I put this track on the bottom. Uh, what that does again is it's it's lower than these wheels by eighth of an inch. So it helps that track to come down and smoothly uh, hit the floor. So all of these little tiny wheels were custom made. And how I did that was I bought a piece of rubber that fit around a bearing. And this rubber was from uh, McMaster car. So it came in a tube and I sliced it and then I, I slipped the bearing in there. So it looks like this. Then I molded this. Uh, then what happens is you take each of these bearings again and just slip them in the mold. So you have a bearing on each one of these things. And then you pour your urethane, your two-part urethane in here. And when it cures, you pop them out and they become a little wheel with a bearing embedded inside of them, just like this. So as I was saying, this was the first version of a track drive. And since the track was plastic versus metal, you see these wearing right here. This wore, this side wore where this side kind of didn't. So what was happening was the track was a little off, or when you turn, the track just resists movement and it brushes up against your guide. And if the guide is even the same type of plastic, they're going to rub, and soon it's going to rub off, and then the track will be will start moving like this, and it'll jump, and it'll it'll fall off of your wally. So. When I came up with this all-metal drive system, that's this is what I envisioned was replacing uh, these. There were smooth wheels here. I replaced them with uh, these heavy number 60 chain and then number 60 uh, gears going all the way around. So another nice thing that you've got to do is make sure they're as friction-free as possible because a drivetrain like this will create so much friction that your motor is going to be struggling like crazy to push your your uh, your robot uh, for when it, when you're doing things or when you're just driving around. Um, that's why track drives are so so bad uh, to put in anything uh, versus wheeled robots. So let me show you how this was constructed uh, over here. These are all handmade things, so um, so you do have to have some kind of way to fabricate these things, and you have to not be scared of fabricating these things. Uh, again, these are these are designs that I'm showing you that that are are complete, but to get to that stage, there had to be some mistakes and there had to be some failures, so. You know, it's this is this is the thing that finally worked out. So don't be scared. Uh, what we did, what I did here was I bought two things. 
these are plates, and these are the plates that all these uh, rubber treads eventually screw onto. Uh, what this is, is called attachment chain. It's called attachment chain, of course, because they have these little wings on them, and therefore attaching things to. Uh, you're going to have to look up on the internet uh, if you want to find these. It's, I can't even remember where I got these. It's just called, again, attachment chain, so you'd look up, like, attachment chain, or number 60 attachment chain, uh, if you want something as heavy duty as this. Uh, if you're building a smaller robot, you don't need such a heavy gauge chain. So, what I did, and alignment is critical, so I had two, another chain here on this side, line these up, and basically just welded each tab to the plates. So once you have that all welded up one by one, and you can see it right here, on these where uh, the welds are here, and here, and here, and here. These screws right here, there's two screws that hold on the rubber tread, which you can see between here where the rubber tread hits the metal tread. So that wraps around here. The uh, when the tra drive train drives again, it rolls along and hits the smooths out, hits these guys, and and it rolls along. So there's one more thing actually that you need to do, in my opinion, for the Wally, which um, I I know is or I hear it's not in the the Disney Wally. Part of the problem they were having was was vibration. Um, you can see it on this one, where I have these shock absorbers. So basically you have the entire drive system, the drive system, the bar going across like that. So if I took off this uh, piece of wood here, the platform here, the whole model will come off. So uh, this spring suspension is nothing more than a PVC cap and there's a bolt going through it of course and inside the PVC cap and inside the bolt there's just a spring. So this uh, PVC cap is uh, resting on the spring. So you can see three of them here, but I actually have seven uh, located uh, in various places on this model. But what you have to do also, which was crazy uh, to me, is the model, you need to put everything you that's going to be on the model on it. So you have to load it with its batteries. It has to be a finished product, in other words, because you want it such that anything slight will make this model move. So it's basically riding on the springs, and it's not riding on the drive system. So that will make your... Uh, while they run, and also if he's turning his head, um, you'll see some slight movement of the body. That's because of the balance of the, of the robot. I know I have a little squeak, but you know what, I think that's part of Wally's character. And you'll see when he stops and he starts, he's going to rock a little bit. Since I destroyed this just now, um, you can see the front part of his shocks on this one. Move. 
So I think that's essentially it with the drivetrain. So again, what's critical for this thing is to remember the concept of the wheel and having flat pieces on it. That's essentially what you're getting as far as the roughness. You want to have the drive wheels up and off of the surface that you're running on. That will uh, make the take the stress off the drive wheels. It will also uh, give you a smooth transition here if you have the smaller wheels that are lower. And then uh, you want to make sure your wheels, the rest of the wheels that aren't driven, are very friction free. You want to make sure uh, you have a powerful enough motor because uh, as the drivetrain is going, it's pushing all of this, all of this weight. I mean, that's really heavy stuff, and it's it's turning in this circle. So uh, you need a, a nice motor. You need it to be geared properly so that there's enough torque on that motor that can make it spin. Uh, and, and that's about it. But uh, in order to do that, you have to have something like this. You've, you've really got to have someone that can help you weld. Uh, these are, this is a heavy duty system. Uh, and that's, and that's what it takes to, uh, to design and build something like this. What? McMaster. Oh yeah, um, McMaster's part in this was, uh, basically he helped uh, very in a very critical time of of the Wallys, we were trying to build uh, Wallys together. We collaborate on things. So, as I was designing the body and the the uh, the detailing, uh, he was going after the drivetrain. He did he did a really good job. The uh, without these sprockets on here, these gears, uh, that was basically the system he designed for the plastic track. Uh, these wheels were uh, the urethane, the same urethane that I'm using for these. Uh, and it was a pretty tough drive system. Uh, the guides, again, were, uh, were were rubbing, I think, too much on, on mine. And eventually, I think we didn't know or didn't foresee us driving these so much as we had been driving them. So uh, what had happened is Again, it wore a little bit on the plastic. Um, so with this nice foundation of having the motor mounted and uh, the wheel system, uh, it made it a lot easier for me to uh, throw on some gears and really get into the, to the drive and, and make it like a tank. So literally this, this thing won't stop uh, when uh, if, if you need it not to stop. Uh, what else? The, I think that's about it. So that's what it takes to uh, build a Wally drive system. I hope uh, it helps you guys out and maybe developing something smaller or larger. Uh, it was funny when I was talking to the to the guys and trying to order the chain, I told them it was going to be put in something that was kind of like a tank drive. And the second time I called them back and said, yeah, I wanted to order the chain, they said, uh, we need more explanation about what, what you're actually going to do with the chain. And I said, oh, because I said it was like a small tank. And they said, yeah. So I explained to them it was actually going into a Wally. And I sent them some pictures of, of the Wally in development. And uh, then they, they were happy to sell me the chain. But uh, anyway, so let them know what you're doing, Wally. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys have a great year. And uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope it was informative for you. See ya.